error message or warning, each child in a list should have a unique key prop occurs in React when a component is being rendered as a list and one or more of the child components do not have a unique key prop. In this video, I'm going to explain to you in no ambiguous terms why this error occurs and how you should solve it properly. Hello everybody, my name is Scooter. Welcome to Coding 101, where my, by, where my objective is to make you a better developer one video at a time. Sounds good? Then subscribe to my channel for more relevant coding content. And while you're at it, be sure to like this video and leave a comment in the comment section. Now, before we begin, let's first talk about the origins of this error. And what better way to do that than by looking at our code that was used to produce that error. So you can see that in this code here, what we're trying to do is we're trying to render out a list of these fruits that we get from the state over here. And we're using the li element in order to render those fruits. So instead of having to state uh, those fruits uh, with that li element, we're dynamically rendering those fruits. And henceforth, because of this, we're getting an error. The error message or the warning demands that we supply this element, this list item element with a key prop. And exactly why is this React, um, and exactly why is React demanding that we supply the list item tag with a key prop? The key prop is used by React to uniquely identify each child component in the list so that it can effectively update the list when the data changes. Without a unique key, React has no way to determine which specific item in the list has been updated, added, or removed, so it'll throw an error. So say, for example, you're creating a to-do list application, and in your to-do list application, you have about five to-do list items, and you have a delete and update functionality. So let's say you press the delete button. So now React has to be able to identify which item in the list is getting deleted so that it can update the DOM. So this is also about the document object model. This is how React relates to the document object model. React uses the key prop to understand the component to DOM element relation, which is then used for the reconciliation process. So what exactly is reconciliation, right? Let's try to understand that. Think of creating a React application as creating a tree of React elements. So as you can see over here, let's assume that these nodes over here are those React elements. If you're not familiar with document object model, I do have a tutorial on document object model, so make sure that you check that one out. So think of creating a React application as creating a tree of React elements. Now what happens is, whenever a state is updated, a different tree of elements is generated. Now React has the task to calculate and figure out how to update the current user interface so that it matches the new tree that was just generated. This process is called reconciliation. And the key prop is used in order to know which element has been changed in the process in the case of a list being rendered. So it is therefore important, therefore very important, that the key is used in a list, um, in, in a list item. So it's very important that there is a key prop in those list items. And it is very important that the key prop that is being used remains unique and it does not change. Otherwise, there's a good chance that React will mix up the elements and mutate the incorrect one. It is also important, like I said, that this key remains static throughout all the re-renders in order to maintain best performance. So we figured out where this error comes from. We've explained the origin of this error and why it occurs. 
let's now figure out how to actually solve this error. So in order to solve this error, what we can do is we can put an index over here in the callback function and use that index as our key prop. Now, this is what many developers recommend, although there are some developers who say it is not best practice to use this index that you're seeing over here. And let me show you uh, the reasoning behind why it is not recommended to use index. But for the most part, this will work. Let's um, let's just go to our browser and sort of like refresh. I would have thought it was going to refresh, but you can see that we've gotten rid of the error by just adding index as our key. But like I said, it's not recommended to use this index as our key. And the reason why it's not recommended is because look at this, right? So let's now just put the indexes, uh, the keys for each of those items in there. And then we just put it here one, and we just put it here two, and use three. So these are the keys that are attached to those individual um, items in that list, right? So let's say, for example, we get rid of peach. We implement a function that gets rid of peach, right? We cancel out peach. So what's going to happen to these indexes that you're seeing over here? The index is going to change responding to the now deleted item. So now what we know is that the watermelon is not going to be tied to that index of three now. The index is going to be tied to that index of two. In fact, you know what? I think let's see it in practice. I'm just going to do this. Just get, get rid of all those comments. And I'm just going to create another. This is going to be index. So I'm going to render the items with an index as well. Let's maybe create some space in here. Yeah, that's cool. All right. So this is the items and the index on the side, right? So now if we were to get rid of the peach, you will notice now pay attention, pay attention first to the indexes or the indices or whatever you call them uh, of each of those items. If we were to get rid of peach like this, look what happens to the indexes. They now change. If we were to get rid of, um, if we were to keep peach and maybe let's say get rid of the apple at the top, so you could see that now each of those items in the list have different indexes. This is exactly why it is not recommended to use the index of an item as a key when rendering a list of items in React because the index is not a stable value. If items are added, removed, or reordered in the list, the index of each item will change, causing React to re-render all child components using new indices. This can lead to poor performance and unexpected behavior. So instead, it is recommended to use a unique and stable value such as the item's ID as the key. This allows React to identify items by a consistent value and efficiently update the list when changes occur. So what would we do in this case in order to have a more um, stable index? Maybe what we can do is instead of having these strings as items, maybe we can create uh, this as a JSON array and include uh, an ID as a property to that uh, item. So there's our JSON object. And instead of using index in this case, we would use the fruits ID. So you would just come over here and we would just say fruit.id. And then if we were to also come here, we can also put that fruit.id. Also don't forget to say fruit.i, fruit.fruit .fruit here. And that should be it. 
Now I've created a function over here that is just going to delete the last item inside of that uh, fruit array. And I've taken this uh, function and I've tied it to this on click event. So this button over here, every time we click it, it's going to call this delete fruit button because I just want to show you how um, that st the stability of that fruit ID compared to using index as our key prop. So if we go to our project over here, you'll see that we have once again our fruit and then we have our IDs. If we were to delete the fruit causing a state change, you will notice that even though we've deleted an item in the array, unlike the index item, our ID or our key prop is still the same. It is still stable. So performance in this case will not be affected no matter how many times we delete those items inside of the array. So this is the reason why it is recommended to establish your own unique ID and use it as a key prop inside of your rendered list items. So that is it for today's tutorial. I hope you've learned something. And if you have learned something, then please click the like button. Click the like button. If you haven't subscribed, make sure that you subscribe. And if you have any questions, any comments, leave them in the comments section. And I love you for watching. Thank you very much. I will see you next time.